Hello, my name is Claire Kittner. I am a physician assistant in the Demoulis Center for Cardiac Arrhythmias at Massachusetts General Hospital. You were referred to the Cardiac Arrhythmia Service because you have an abnormal heart rhythm. Many times, slow heartbeats or rhythms that cause your heart chambers to beat out of sync with each other can be fixed with a device, such as a pacemaker, defibrillator, or a resynchronization therapy device, also called a CRT. This video will outline the necessary steps you need to take before you come into the hospital for your scheduled device procedure, as well as what to expect before and after. First, lab testing and a chest x-ray should be completed within 30 days prior to your procedure. We prefer these to be completed at least one to two weeks prior to the procedure. This way, if there are any abnormalities, we have time to address them beforehand and repeat testing. These labs and imaging studies will be ordered by a provider to be completed at an MGB facility. One of our team members will call you before the procedure to outline all of the necessary steps to this testing. You will receive a call from one of our nurses the day before your procedure to specifically review medications to hold, what time to come into the hospital, and where to check in. Please note if you use patient gateway, the time associated with your procedure may not be accurate. Additionally, if you have an allergy to contrast dye, you should notify your doctor before your procedure as you may need to be pre-medicated to avoid a reaction. The day before your procedure, you will need to stop eating solid food as early as 10 p.m. You can only drink clear liquids up until one hour prior to arriving to the hospital. Clear liquids include Gatorade, Powerade, Pedialyte, apple juice, cranberry juice, grape juice, water, regular or diet soda, black coffee, or tea. Do not drink milk, cream, or non-dairy creamer. Your procedure could risk getting canceled if you have solid food or non-clear liquids in your system. If you are diabetic, drinking a clear liquid with sugar up until one hour before you arrive to the hospital is important to avoid low blood sugar. If you are on a blood thinner, such as a Pixaban or Eliquis, Rivaroxaban or Xeralto, Dabigatrin or Pradaxa, you will be required to hold your evening dose the evening before the procedure and your morning dose the morning of the procedure to reduce the risk of bleeding. If you are on warfarin or coumadin, this can be continued without any missed doses. However, you should have an INR level checked once a week for three weeks prior to the procedure to ensure your levels have remained therapeutic. If you have your INRs checked at an outside facility, please bring in a printed copy of your INR levels when you present to the hospital for your procedure. After your procedure, our team may elect to have you hold additional doses of your blood thinner, depending on how your incision, incision site looks. If you are taking canagliflozin or Invokana, dapagliflozin or Farsiga, or empagliflozin or Jardiance, please hold three days before your scheduled procedure. If you are taking ertagliflozin or Stiglatro, it should be held four days prior to your procedure. If you are taking a GLP-1 agonist such as semaglutide or Ozempic or Wagovi, Exanatide ER or Bidurion, Dulaglutide or Trulicity, Albaglutide or Tanzium, or Terzapatide or Monjaro, it should be held for one week prior to your procedure. It's also important to notify your endocrinologist about the need for holding these medications one week prior to your procedure so they are aware. If your doctor has instructed you to hold any other medications prior to the procedure, please do so as well. Other medications that can interact with anesthesia are also typically held the morning of your procedure, like blood pressure medications, diuretics or water pills, and medications that affect your heart rate. If you need to hold any additional medications the morning of the procedure, our team will let you know when we call you the day before. On the morning of the procedure, when you arrive to the hospital, you will meet with your care team. Device implant procedures are usually performed under conscious sedation, meaning you will receive sedating medication through an IV to make you groggy, but you will not have a breathing tube because you will be able to breathe on your own. If you require higher doses of sedating medication, or if you will require support with your breathing, you may meet with an anesthesiologist or CRNA beforehand to discuss your history. You will also meet with the physician performing your procedure, as well as the assisting fellow, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner. You will sign a formal consent form after discussing the risks of the procedure and meeting with your entire team. The risks of a device implantation procedure are very rare, however, they are important to review. You may have one, two, or three wires implanted into your heart, depending on the type of device you are receiving. Your doctor will first give you numbing medication to an area on your upper chest and will make a small incision to access the vein that lies below your collarbone. Small catheters or tubes will be placed into this vein, which will feed the leads or wires for the device down into the, your heart chambers. 
These leads will then be secured to the heart muscle and will then be attached to the generator or battery of the device which will sit underneath your skin where the incision is located. The skin will then be closed with absorbable sutures and you will go home with a dressing on your chest which will need to stay in place for five days. On the rare occasion, staples may be used to close your incision site. These will be removed two weeks after your procedure at a follow-up appointment. You will then have a second follow-up appointment six to 12 weeks after your procedure. You will receive specific instructions regarding your type of device dressing and when the site may get wet before you are discharged home. There is a risk of some pain or discomfort at the incision site, bleeding, infection, and swelling. Because your vein underneath the collarbone is located near your lungs, there is also a risk of damaging the lungs to the point where you may need a chest tube, although this is very rare. Additionally, it takes about six weeks for the new leads or wires to settle into the heart tissue, so they are fragile over this time. You will not be able to do any heavy lifting and you will not be able to lift your elbow above the level of your shoulder on the side of the device for a full six weeks. This is to prevent the leads from becoming dislodged or falling out of place or from damaging the heart tissue. If this happens, you may require an additional procedure to fix the leads. A separate video discusses all of the restrictions you will need to follow after your procedure. Additional procedural complications that can occur include stroke, heart attack, damage to the kidneys if contrast dye is used, and death in extremely rare cases. It is important to mention that each of these risks are very rare and your care team is well equipped to address any potential complication that may occur. Many patients are discharged the same day as their procedure depending on the time their case is finished, how long the procedure took, and how you feel after the procedure. If you meet our criteria for a safe discharge, you may be sent home the same day. Otherwise, you will be kept overnight for monitoring and likely discharged the following day. It is important to mention that under no circumstance can you drive yourself to the hospital for your procedure. You cannot drive for two weeks after a device implantation. Under certain circumstances, it is Massachusetts state law that you, that you cannot drive for a full six months after your device implant if you have ever passed out or lost consciousness as a result of your abnormal heart rate. Regarding travel after your procedure, this will be up to your doctor based on your particular case. If you have planned to travel shortly after your procedure, please let your doctor know beforehand. Generally speaking, travel is permitted after a week or so as long as you can abide to activity restrictions. For six weeks following your procedure, you cannot lift anything heavier than five to 10 pounds, and you cannot lift the arm on the side of the device overhead. A separate video discusses all of the restrictions you will need to follow after your procedure. If you go home the same day as your procedure, you must have an adult who will escort you home after the procedure. You will also need to have an adult stay at home with you overnight. This person will also need to be available to review your discharge instructions in person, as you will just be waking up from surgery. A physician assistant or nurse practitioner from our team will see you prior to your discharge and will review all of your medications and any new prescriptions that you may need. If you do end up staying overnight in the hospital, you will usually be discharged the next morning. If you are discharged the same day, someone from our device team will call you the following day to check in and to see how you're feeling. They will ask about your device implantation site, your prescriptions, and will review a remote transmission from your device to ensure everything is functioning properly. You will be discharged home with either a remote monitor to keep plugged into your bedside table at home, or you will be set up with a phone app that is able to monitor your device. A representative from the manufacturing company of your device will review instructions on your home monitoring before you leave the hospital. You will then have a follow-up visit with your doctor or their advanced practice provider in the office in 6 to 12 weeks. If you have any general questions, you may call the office at 617-724-4500 between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. or you can send a message through Patient Gateway. Please note, we do not check gateway messages overnight or on weekends.